What's going on guys, it's Hi with the uh, Left USA and recently I've been looking for a new tripod. But when it comes to tripods, I'm just a little bit picky because I need to know that a certain tripod is going to work with my workflow. And I also have to have absolute confidence in it because if I can't trust it to hold a couple thousand dollars worth of gear, then what good is it? This is why I really don't like to do tripod reviews or really shop for tripods in general just because I can never really find something that I'm happy with. I've been using the same tripod for the past many years and I really like it and it consists of the Manfrotto MT190CX Pro 4 legs and the Manfrotto MH055 ball head. This is my photography setup. I've had it since the beginning of my career and I really don't see it stopping anytime soon. For photography, it fits the bill perfectly and is exactly what I am looking for. But recently I've been doing a lot of videos where I'm recording myself doing photography with this tripod setup. So I essentially need a second tripod for a second camera. A second camera that's typically smaller and requires a smaller tripod setup than what my photography tripod setup can give me. So what I essentially need is a travel tripod. I've been on the hunt for this second tripod for a while, but I think that hunt is finally over with this Siri A1205. When I was looking for a new travel tripod, I was looking for one that folds up small, is lightweight, and holds a decent payload. Now you may think that these requirements are rather simple, but I found it quite difficult to find a tripod that had all three of these things. It's easy to find a tripod that's small and lightweight, but that tripod may not actually hold a decent amount of payload, so that tripod may not actually really be functional at all. Then you have other tripods that may hold a decent payload and is marketed as a travel tripod but then you look at its dimensions and it's not really a travel tripod at all. It's about the same size as my regular photography setup. This is why I kind of feel that the Siri A1205 is kind of a happy medium and offers the best of all worlds and is why I bought it. First off, let's look at the size of this Siri, and it may be hard to comprehend just how small this tripod is based on this video, but here it is next to a 16.9 fluid ounce bottle of Coke, and as you can see, the Coke bottle is about two-thirds the size of the tripod, so the tripod is quite small. And here's a more meaningful comparison for me, the Siri right next to my Manfrotto photography setup. And of course, it's a night and day difference. The Siri is just dwarfed by this Manfrotto setup. Of course, this one is sturdier and beefier, but the Siri really holds its own. Thanks to its five section inverted leg design, the Siri A1205 can fold down to 14.6 inches, but can expand to a maximum working height of 55.1 inches. Its carbon fiber construction allows it to have a maximum load capacity of 22 pounds while only weighing 2.2 pounds. 2.2 pounds. This entire tripod weighs 2.2 pounds. This head alone weighs 2.2 pounds. So as far as size, weight, and max payload, the Siri A1205 really provides a good overall package. Another notable thing about this tripod is that you can actually remove one of its legs and combine it with the center column to get a functional monopod. Now this setup is sold as a combo, and by combo I mean that the head and legs are sold in combination. And from my personal experience, combo tripods are never really perfect. The legs may be nice, and the head may not be, or vice versa. With something like my Manfrotto setup, you buy the legs and the head separately, so you can really build something that you're happy with and something that works for you. With a combo, you get what you get, and it is what it is, so you just gotta be happy with it. Now you may be thinking that you can just buy the combo tripod and maybe down the road part it out, buy a new pair of legs, buy a new head, replace something that you don't like. But this is a little bit difficult with a travel tripod just because of the way that it folds down. These tripods are really designed in a specific way for the legs and head to really work together to create a compact package when it is folded down to its travel size. If you throw a different head on these legs, the legs might not close properly and it end up taking up more space than when you first started. So it comes to the point where you gotta ask yourself, what's the point? So with a tripod like this, you just really have to learn to live with the drawbacks that it has and learn to just use it as it is. And with that, let's talk about some of the drawbacks that I feel that this tripod has. First, and this is completely personal, but the biggest drawback of this tripod for me is the twist lock legs. I personally prefer my tripods to have flip locks because there is a positive confirmation of when it is locked and when it's unlocked. You just know for sure right when you look at it that if it's open, it's unlocked. If it's down, it's locked. With a flip lock, it is either locked or unlocked. There's really no in between unless there is something wrong with your tripod. 
with a twist lock, there is an in-between. There is a point where you're not locking it down fully, and I've had occasions where I'm just moving about and the legs start coming out, or even worse, when I'm actually using my tripod, and I can see that the tripod's starting to tip over, and I catch it, and that is just the worst feeling in the world, where you're thinking that your tripod's just going to tumble over and everything gets destroyed. That being said, I haven't had any problems with these particular twist locks yet on this tripod. Just spend your time, really lock it down, make sure that everything is properly tightened and you shouldn't have anything to worry about. Again, the twist locks are a personal problem. If they made a flip flop version of this, I would definitely buy that for sure. But unfortunately, for some reason, when it comes to travel tripods, manufacturers really like the twist lock design. The second and only other drawback that I can think of for this tripod is its maximum payload. Although Siri advertises a 22 pound maximum payload, there is no way that this tripod can handle 22 pounds. Or at least, the legs may be able to handle 22 pounds, but there's no way that the head can handle 22 pounds. I've tested this tripod out with about 10 pounds of gear and there is definitely some movement. I often take multiple exposures of a scene, whether it's for bracketing or for focus stacking, and in between images, I can see that the camera setup is not the same in the various pictures. I kind of knew that this was going to be a problem with this tripod before I even bought it because really every tripod manufacturer overestimates their maximum payloads. When a manufacturer says something like a 22 pound maximum payload, you should really be expecting about half of that unless of course you're really spending money on a tripod so you're really getting that quality. Even though this is a really well built tripod, at the end of the day it retails for around $240 so you're not making the biggest investment in the grand scheme of things. This is actually a rather cheap tripod when you compare it to other travel tripods that have similar specs. With that in mind, it's really hard to put any fault towards this tripod considering everything else that you're getting. A really small, lightweight tripod that holds a decent amount of weight. I'm really enjoying the Siri A1205 and if you're looking for something similar, a small, lightweight, compact tripod, then I really suggest you check this one out. If you're interested in this tripod, I'll include links in the description below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing for more content like this. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.